he heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold, electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left! No time to waste, guys! Let's get moving! Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of a wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but... Ugh, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have had bigger balls than that. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again, I dare you. I double dog dare you, motherfucker. Say what? One more. <clears throat> you. Have. No. You, Lua, you wanna die. I'd like to see you try. You fucking brat. Alright, let's go. Hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for this. It's not gonna do us any good. <clears throat> Gosh. Jumpy shied. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyway. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single, short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a thick iron wall. Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door is the only option we got, right? Yeah, it looks like it. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. It read, Operating Room. If it was to be believed, the room on the other side of the door was an operating room. Something about it made Junpei feel... nervous. Well, there's no point just standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed, with Clover right behind him. Part of the room just past the door was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Yeah! Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran toward Clover to see what had frightened her. They rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. Oh, what the hell is this? Is, is this a corpse? It was something that looked kind of like a human, laying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed, an operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. Slowly, they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body after all. What the hell? It's just a huge doll or something. A, a, a doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked, as intently as possible, from as far away as possible, at the thing. Phew. Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. <laughs> well, I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any balls. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty. Oh, what's this? You want a piece of me, short stuff? Yeah, bring it on, you whale. Hey, guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. Hmm. Huh. 
Junpei sighed and shook his head. Anyway, it looks like he's got something that the two of you could stand to have a little more of. I'm talking about a heart. Huh? Oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ there could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Or maybe it's got more personal uses? Seven's grin was more than a little perverted. Clover glared at him. Anyway, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. Welcome to the operating room. So let's take a look at this thing again. Those dolls are really kind of creepy, you know. Hey, it says something here. John? You think that's this doll's name? Maybe. This thing is creepy. I wonder why it's on the bed. Hey, I wonder what this didn't... Oh, it says kilogram on the display. You think maybe it's a scale? Uh, I think so. So, we're weighing this thing, I guess. What's this? Hmm. Which of these is not like the others? Crocher forceps. Wait, no. Co kosher? No. Co cocker? I have no idea. Are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, it's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can hold uh, blood vessels shut, keep tissue out of the way. We can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Hmm. Seven thinking of clever uses for items. Voila! Um. Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. She has a name, too. Lucy. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather all her parts? Could be. I don't see any more sitting around here. What's this thing? It's got these short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater. There's nothing inside it. Well, nothing for us to use, at least. Ah. A fake chest. With what is presumably a slot for a heart. Ew, that's gross. It's This is the chest. It's a woman's chest. The heart's gone, but it's pretty hot. If that kind of thing turns you on, Seven, you're a real creepo. Unacceptable. There's a lot of different kinds of medication. It's hard to tell them apart. There are a whole bunch of bottles on the shelves. They all look like medicine. They've got labels, but they're all big medical words that I don't understand. Maybe you're supposed to heat something on that gauze. Heat something like that gauze to kill the bacteria. There's a boily thing over there. There's something on the lid or in the drawers. Nothing much there, huh? How about this table? Okay. We have a scalpel. Oh my god, are we, got, are we gonna have to... This is starting to look like saw. We're, we're gonna have to cut a key out of somebody's stomach. Oh my god. We have too many pieces of surgical equipment for my, my comfort. A scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. Hmm. Scalpel. A medical mannequin with its guts showing. Ew. Gross. Hey, Junpei. There's a slit in this thing's chest. Yeah, sure is. There's something in there. Uh, maybe we can get it out. Mm, uh, damn it. This thing they won't budge. It's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force on this one, then. We need something small that can fit into that little hole. Like forceps. It's... A lung? So we took the organ thingy out of the chest thingy. It's a lung, not an organ thingy. Huh? This part here on the back? It's all rubbery. You're right. So... It's a fake organ. Of course it'd be. 
Wait, what's Seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like there's something in here. You think we can cut through the rubber part? Sure we can. Let's try cutting this organ with the scalpel. Oh my god. We cut a key out of somebody's lungs. Now I just need to find out what's locked. That would seem to be this area. We can go around these panels. Oh, apparently this door was locked. Awesome, it's unlocked. What is, hang on, what does it say? It's a chemical closet. Okay. Lots of stuff here. Hmm? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. Well, of course that stinks. It's ammonia. Oh. Hey, Junpei. You think there are any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. What's she pointing at? The label states NACL. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrill up if we put salt on him? Hey! You see something? Oh boy. What is this? There's a note on the table. Iron equals one, salt equals two, water equals three. Carbon dioxide? Question mark. Ammonia? Question mark. Ethanol? Question mark. Hmm. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's something to do with this box? This thing won't open. Is it locked? You probably need to put in a passcode. I mean, geez, they've even got a keypad on there. How much obvious can you get? I can only enter three numbers. Oh, and now it's telling me how to use a keypad again. Let's give it a shot. Um. Oh, no, no. Well, I tried everything I could think of. Oh, what is this? Blue liquid. Okay. Listen, there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out into the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's alien blood? Uh, where the hell did that come from? Then what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know, some kind of special bath soap? Ugh, what a boring guess. Is there another one here? Uh, red liquid. I'm just gonna skip the t text for them saying, oh, it's red. What is this again? Iron salt water. So now you gotta think, okay. What is iron? What is salt? What is water? We've already talked about salt being NaCl, so that's sodium and chlorine. So we've got two things in that. Sodium and chlorine. Iron is just one thing, just iron. Water H2O, well that's three, two H's and an O. Okay, okay. So now we gotta test our knowledge here. Carbon dioxide, okay, that's CO2, so that's also three. One C, two O's. Ammonia, and we just talked about that with seven. He said NH3 was ammonia, so that's four. One N, three H's. So we have three, four, and then ethanol. We don't know what ethanol is. Well, look at the first line. Maybe question mark represents a number. We gotta figure out what ethanol is. Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H5OH, right? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So, you're gonna drink it? Mm. No, I won't. It might say that's what's on the label, but there could be anything in there. What the hell did it say on there? There's a bottle of ethanol on the shelf. The label says C2H5OH. Well, that's 25789, right? So, 349? Okay, yes, thank you. I know how to enter a passcode. It's weird that it gives you instructions. Like, no one's... Like, who hasn't used one of these before? Heyo! Oh! That's an arm. Hey, can somebody give me a hand? Nothing? No, no one? Alright. What is this? A heart! Oh, hey, look at that. 
That looks like it could go here. No? Okay. Well, that seems to be everything for this room. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and they left. And left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized Seven wasn't following suit. Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... He looked up at Junpei distractedly, and then back down at the brown bottle he held cupped in his large hands. What's that? In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it, and twisted it around to read the label. Ethylene diamine tartrate? EDT. It's tartartic ethyl ethylene diamine. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. Junpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about E.T. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old E.D.T. crystals. They were making it to sell as a industrial strength cleaner, like I told you, or poor. But... A year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to, ED to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystal turns into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere near that first American factory. They'd been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like... Man, how do you say it? You mean like it was infected with a virus or something? Seven shook his head. No, not like that. It spread like wildfire. It showed up in labs that were completely isolated from the rest of the world. It even started happening to crystals that were completely sealed up. It doesn't seem like it could have been a result of this stuff coming in contact with some of the samples. Then... Well, I guess it was some sort of information. Like, the crystals were transmitting this information all across the world somehow. What information? How to make a new crystal. So something had to tell the stuff how to do it, right? Like, it just whispered to the EDT in the tank, Hey, if you do this, you can take in water molecules. Come on, man, that's just... I mean, who is this someone, anyway? Someone you can't see. Someone who exists all over the world. You mean, like a god? Or maybe the devil. Seven grinned. As Junpei was trying to figure out what on earth he was going to say next, Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey! What are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez! Seven looked at Junpei. Yeah, so, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he just heard. Information being transmitted invisibly? Could such a thing really happen? Well, thinking about that crap isn't going to help me right now. We need to figure out how to get the hell out of here first. He took a deep breath, tried to clear his mind, and followed after seven. You can turn left around this corner. It says... Preparation room. Okay. It's locked. I guess we aren't prepared. Okay. Let's see. We've got some body parts here. Let's, um... 
This bed doesn't look very comfortable. Lucy's head and left arm are sitting on the bed. Maybe something will happen if we gather all her body parts. What can I... Can I put... I can't put them down yet, I guess. Some kind of device attached to the bed. It says kilograms on the panel. Is this a scale? Hmm. Let's examine the other body again. Okay, I don't need to talk about operating tables. Thank you. A creepy medical mannequin is lying on the bed. Apparently his name is John. Huh? There's some kind of lid on this thing. Why don't you try opening it? Can't. There's no handle. I can't get under it with my nails either. I can give you a hand. Oh, I'm just kidding. Maybe it's locked? Something that looks like it could be a scale. It has something that looks like a lid on the front of it. We can't open it. Hmm. What am I missing here? Um. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. A heart! This thing is super creepy. This ain't good for the heart. Hmm. Wow. Looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out into the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright red! Do you think it's blood? No, blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. Hmm. Oh. I'm so dumb. I think the key might open both doors. I just need to have it equipped. Yep. Cool, it's unlocked. Hmm. I think you hang your coat here. There's a bunch of hooks. That's why they call them coat hooks, Junpei. Let's see if... Huh, a piece of paper. What's this? Is this some kind of medical record? New material has been added to the file screen. Oh, okay. You don't use this screen very often. So you can look at... This is like partially tutorials. The medical record, here we go. Hmm. John and Lucy. And apparently they're weights. Interesting. I'm sure it'll be useful eventually. Ah. Uh, what the hell are you doing? Don't you want to get out of here? But I'm tired. It's locked. It won't even budge. Do you think this is the exit? Uh, you can't have... Do I not have... What? Wait. How do I not have any items equipped? Oh, my keys apparently used up. It's like stuck in the door or something. It's just gone. They could have explained that a little better. A sink. The doctors and nurses probably washed their hands here before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. Some lockers. Damn. It's not opening. Locked, of course. The blue plate on here seems a little suspicious, though. <laughs> it's locked. They're lockers! Hmm. This is interesting. Hello. I feel like I'm playing Mist. There's a ray of light going through the beaker. And it's hitting the thing on the right. Now what is this? The white light on the top is glowing. Yeah, but the red, blue, and purple ones still aren't lit. Oh, hey, hello. Hey, the blue light turned on. And I heard a noise. It sounded like something unlocking. I guess I'll just pour that back in. Hey -o. Fake left leg. Alright. I think we know what to do next. The red light's on now. I think I heard another noise. One at a time. Fake right leg. Getting a lot of body parts here. Now then. Hey. If you didn't know, mixing red and blue makes purple. I think you knew. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. Good job, Junpei. The purple light came on, and I heard it unlock. 
I'm sure it's unlocked. The locker with the purple plate has gotta be unlocked. Alright, let's see what happened. Do I just have... Yeah, I just have purple liquid now. No unmixing those. Fake stomach. God, it looks like a nose pass. <laughs> Gross. So, how much of a body have we got here? Torso, legs, left arm. All we don't have is a head and a right arm. I think I know where we can find some of those. Alright. An old hard bed, yes. Okay. So we've collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones we've got must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. Seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. Alright, let's get started. Combine! You watch too much anime, Junpei. Hey, nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Weight? Yeah, well, you know, there's a scale on the side of the bed. Maybe... Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap her body parts with John's. Oh. Let's give it a shot. Operating instructions. Oh yeah, so they give you a special interface for this. So you don't have to uh, walk back and forth between these tables. And now we want... Let's see if I remember how to do this. Well, that'll do it. You just gotta swap everything except for the arm. That's uh, permanent. Junpei, I heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. <laughs> you can actually tell it says John. Huh? The lid on the scale. Hello. Hey, it opened. Oh, I get it. It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Jupiter key. There's a marking grid on this key. I think it's the Jupiter symbol. Well, we have a key and a locked door. I think we know what to do next. Hey, hold on. Junpei stopped, about to put the key into the doorknob. What's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Junpei turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. God damn it, where the hell'd she go? <sighs> okay, hold on a minute, I'll, I'll go get her. Sure thing. Junpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her, standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. Mm. She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Junpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Did you want to come back in here and say goodbye to John? It wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood, stock still, and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps it was something he'd said, or perhaps it was uh, something else. Suddenly her mouth opened and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother... might be dead. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm gonna be next. Suddenly the operating room felt very, very cold. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. We've got the key, let's use it. That cool with you? Clover nodded, almost imperceptibly. Still, Junpei was glad to see she was at least somewhat responsive. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As they arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I'm sorry. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Junpei wasn't sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because her brother had gone missing? I'm really sorry. Just forget about everything I told you, okay? Don't worry about it. Really, I mean it. How could anyone pretend not to hear something like that? 
but something told him this wasn't the time to press the issue. Junpei gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. All right. Thank you. Her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Damn. What the hell took you guys so long? Seven looked up as they walked into the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor out there or something? Maybe. Jealous? Seven avoided answering the question. They stood in front of the door. Junpei took out the Jupiter key. Alright, I'm gonna open it now, is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, alright? <sighs> Fine then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. He felt it unlock. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple, white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. Alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy? You know, get a little excited. Not really. Junpei turned away from Seven and took his first step down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead, and she was likely to follow him. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that? <laughs> 